Are you out of your mind? You want to talk about rhetoric? Let's compare. But let me go back. We are talking about the comments of a comedian. Right. And everybody's going to forget it in 48 hours. I see Vice President Harris going out there and making all of these very dark accusations against President Trump and failing to communicate what she is actually going to do for the American people. She says that you know she always wants to make it about she's not Donald Trump, but she can't tell the American people what she's actually going to do for them. And then on the contrast, you have President Trump, whose closing argument is, Kamala broke it and he will fix it. And that is something that resonates with the American people. I watched all of Trump's remarks start to finish, and he did a great job. He made great points. He started with exactly the right question. Are you better off now than you were four years ago? And he went on from there, just nailed it. When the vast majority of the American people don't believe that we're moving in the right direction, why would they want to vote to continue the same failed policies we've had for the last few years? And that is why we're seeing President Trump is doing so well in all the polling, in the early vote numbers. They look excellent for him. And an investigation is underway following the discovery of an incendiary device inside a ballot box in Portland. Meanwhile, in Vancouver, Washington, ABC affiliate Cat2, uh, capture, uh, KATU rather, captured the moment heavy smoke was seen coming from inside a drop-off ballot box. Because Americans are answering the question that he asked at the beginning of every single rally. Are you better off now than you were when I was president? And the overwhelming answer is no. But I'm telling you, even for me, and I voted for Donald Trump last week, nothing that was said offended me. I'm almost unoffendable. The real joke in America is the terrible policy of Kamala Harris. Kamala Harris is a joke. It's a terrible joke. She's a joke. And nobody's laughing except for her. She has this weird cackle about her that she just goes on and on and on just laughing and cackling oftentimes at herself or maybe just like the voices in her head because she's never actually saying anything for us to hear to even be able to understand and comprehend to find the humor in the joke let alone laugh i actually saw that she did a podcast with shannon sharp shay 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 podcast. And I had no idea this was even happening. I guess this was why her schedule was so tied up and booked. And she couldn't make the Joe Rogan podcast, the Joe Rogan experience, because she had already made a commitment to Shay Shay. Odds are, this is just coincidental, not because it was going to be a safe space. And he was just going to nod and agree with her as she sits there on his leather couch or whatever. But um, why'd you do it? Like, Joe Rogan received 34 million views, as far as I can tell, since uploading the podcast between him and Donald Trump to YouTube, while also making it unlisted for like the first few hours because there was a glitch with Spotify. He wanted it all to go live for everybody at the same time. Despite the fact that YouTube is actually shadow banning this podcast so that if you type in Joe Rogan Trump, it doesn't pull up. It actually pulls up mainstream media so you can get their videos and their lies and their rhetoric and, you know, their campaigning for Kamala. So she chose to go on Shannon Sharp, Shay Shay podcast. Some of you may be familiar with Shannon Sharp and the Shay Shay podcast probably because you found out about it about the same time that I found out about it. And that was because of Cat Williams and Cat Williams created, uh, a, he broke the internet. Really? He had the entire internet buzzing after what he revealed and shared on this podcast. So I feel like the reason why that went so viral and why it received hundreds of millions of views is because I think it was because mainly Cat Williams had something to say that no one had ever heard before. And what he had to say just sent shockwaves throughout the Internet, Hollywood, social media, you name it. Right. So far, Kamala Harris and Shannon Sharp on the Shay Shay podcast has gotten like a couple hundred thousand views, I think. That's where I saw it. Maybe 200,000 views, maybe, since it's been uploaded. And that is awful 
That is terrible. No offense. My video probably won't get 100,000 views. Won't get 200,000 views. But uh, I'm also not sitting here hosting a conversation or a podcast with the vice president who's running for president. You see what I'm saying? But I think it's because she had nothing new to bring, to say, to tell people that they haven't heard already. And therefore, they, the, the Internet doesn't lie. Algorithms don't lie. Like, unless they're going to pay to promote it, people just aren't interested in it. And that's why Cat Williams far exceeded and outperformed Kamala Harris with the podcast. Um, I don't even think a lot of people even knew she did it. It's not really making major headlines like nobody really cares. Whereas on the flip side, if she would have gone on the Joe Rogan experience, even if people don't like Kamala. Odds are she would have reached multiple tens of millions more people by doing it than. Going on the Shannon Sharp Shay Shay podcast, which is kind of like a. Like a like a like a do over or a rerun of the podcast she did with Matt Barnes and what other other basketball player I don't really remember, where it was all pre planned, it was scripted, it was you know edited, it was not raw, not real, not uncut, not what anybody really wanted, but she keeps doing it, she keeps engaging in this, she keeps doing what she's told because I know she's not making the call, I know she's not. Making a de- she's not making the final decision. She doesn't really have a say in it. No one's really, she's not in charge. And she never will be. Even if she wins the presidency, she will not be in charge. I just hope everybody is 100% aware of how this game is played and how this works. Which is why they're so afraid of Donald Trump winning, because he will be in charge. He has been and he will be again. Just like he asked the question, are you better off now? with Kamala Harris and Joe Biden than you were when I was president. And the difference is when he's president, what he says goes and he will make shit happen. Okay. And he says, you know, Kamala likes to throw around that. She's, uh, she's very liked or, or she's very liked or whatever, or she's got ex, uh, Trump administration staffers saying these things about him negatively. And he's like, well, It's kind of easy to be liked or it's hard not to be liked when you never fire anybody, especially people who do a terrible job. And then they'll continue to put the fake smile on their face and, you know, continue to do a terrible job knowing that their job security exists because you're all about box checking and no one's ever going to lose their job because that would be racist. (sighs) I guess the craziest part about it is she inevitably cannot avoid this fate of being fired herself for doing just that, a terrible job. So for fun, let's look at a little bit of the Shay Shay podcast with Kamala Harris, I guess. So what I'm talking about doing right now is based on longstanding work. It's not new, but as president of the United States, part of why it is important is it is a new approach to that job. It is about a new way that is based on a new generation of leadership that is based on new ideas and frankly, a different experience that brings my commitment to the work I am talking about um, into being. Now, if you're as confused as I am trying to sift through that word salad that she just provided in 32 seconds. This is Kamala trying to explain her new approach and it does not go well. (sighs) Despite everything that she said or tried to say, which I don't really know what she was saying, this new approach, what are you talking about? Because you've already explained to us pretty clearly, like this is the crazy part. Sometimes she's very clear and easy to understand. For instance, when she's asked, by her girlfriend, Sonny Hostin, if she would has any regrets, if she would do anything differently, she says, no, nothing comes to mind. That was it. There, literally, she said, no, no, nothing comes to mind. So either it's moments like those where she's like, nah, 
I know what I want to say, but I'm not going to say it. So I'll just say no. Moments like those, she's lying. Or it's moments like these where she rambles on and on and on and on about nothing. But then she's not lying because she never really said anything. So how do you know when Kamala Harris is actually telling the truth? This Puerto Rican has something to say about the island that I love. While you have bone spurs. And we vote. By the way, Jennifer Lopez, Ricky Martin, Bad Bunny, Luis Fonsi, and Mark Anthony have over 345 million followers on Instagram. I think you only have 26 million, since you care so much about size. And I know I said we were going to go watch a little bit of the Shay Shay podcast, but having gotten off on that tangent of The View and Sonny Hostin, I couldn't, I couldn't pass up the opportunity to share with you how triggered she got after the joke told yesterday during the the New York City NYC Trump rally at Madison Square Garden, Kill Tony is an insult comedian. He literally roasted Tom Brady. Like, libs, 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 liberal, these, I mean, they get real sensitive, okay? And they can't take a joke, especially if that joke has any form of truth to it whatsoever, okay? And you got these Democrats out here like Sonny Hostin acting all offended over a joke a comedian made at Madison Square Garden. But if they actually cared about Puerto Rico, like Nick Sorter shares on X here, take a look at this. They'd be slamming the Harris regime for only giving 8% of the Trump administration's $23 billion in hurricane relief meant for the island. Kamala has abandoned Puerto Ricans as she's done to victims of countless other disasters, and she's now trying to gaslight Puerto Ricans into thinking Trump is the real enemy. It won't work. Puerto Ricans know she's stifled aid to them, and they're not going to fall for her lies. So I guess... The real question here, Kamala, is why are you blocking the aid to Puerto Rico and Puerto Ricans? All of you. He's talking about you. It's us. He's not going to be, he's not going to, you know, say, oh, you're with a white guy. I'm going to keep you from being deported. No, he's going to deport you and put the white guy with someone else. The man is out there. He's also. Talk about being out there. That is Whoopi. Insane Whoopi Goldberg absurdly claims that President Trump's going to break up interracial marriages and redistribute the white spouses. <laughs> oh, does anybody actually believe that? All right, I'm done with the view. I'm done with the view. We're going back to the podcast. Unreasonable search and seizure. Your Fifth Amendment right. Mm -hmm. Your Sixth Amendment right to an attorney. Well, a lot right? of rights going to be gone. The First Amendment. But, but the First Amendment, the Second Amendment. Yes. Look, I'm in favor of the Second Amendment. I don't believe we should be taking anybody's guns away. He wants to terminate the Constitution of the United States. So I didn't know until now that Shannon Sharp is a complete and total cuck. He's a he's a simp for Kamala to sit here and say that the First Amendment's going to be taken away if Donald Trump is president. Oh, yeah, he does work for ESPN, doesn't he? Anyway. Kamala sits here and she just claimed that Trump will terminate the Second Amendment and that she'll protect our gun rights. Johnny Maga says on X, I've never seen anything like this level of desperation. Truly astonishing. I mean, this is the same woman who we have on video specifically saying that she doesn't care if you're a legal gun owner. She will still kick in your door and take your guns if she wants to. OK, remember, with the stroke of her pen, with the stroke of her pen, this election is not about Democrats and Republicans. This election is about whether we are a secular nation or are we one nation under God. Kamala Harris is lying to you and telling you that you don't have to abandon your faith to support abortion. I don't know what God she serves, but it is not Jesus Christ. And you know, it was a long time ago but Benjamin Franklin, when he came out of that Constitution Hall after vigorous arguments over how our nation was going to be run, he was asked, sir, what do we have here, a monarchy or a republic? And he said, a republic, if you can keep it. 
We've kept it for 240 years, but we're as close to losing it right now as we have ever been at any point in time. Anti-Christian rhetoric and anti-Christian approach to public policy. I don't think we've... I, I don't think that we've... That's right. Jesus is king. And I don't think that we've seen... of Roe v. Wade, and they did as he intended. Oh, you guys are at the wrong rally. I, I, I don't think that we've seen anything like this in modern American politics. We have a Department of Justice that's being used by the party in power to persecute and prosecute their political opponents, something you would expect in Russia or China or Banana Republic occurring blatantly right in our country. And interestingly enough, we have somebody who's running for president who recently said in a crowd when somebody said, Jesus Christ is Lord, that you're in the wrong crowd. Think about that. Think about you know, in Matthew 12, 34, it says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. She didn't have time to think about what she was going to say. She just said what's in her heart. So maybe she's the one who doesn't belong. Maybe that's what we should be thinking about. Yeah, she doesn't belong. And just like we talked about on the previous video, she's out of her league. She's out of her out of her mind, but she's way out of her lane. And she's really she's going through the motions. This is going to be an amazing case study in the future of DEI, a DEI employment and DEI hires that have gone too far and have gone completely wrong. And I actually have this chart here that I was saving. And I want to show it to you guys because it makes a very interesting comparison, which kind of really sums up this, this party, okay? This, this campaign, we'll call it a campaign. And on the left, we have Nazi. On the right, we have Democrat. And then beneath the two, we have what they stand for. And you can see here that despite Kamala saying that she's going to protect our guns in the Second Amendment, uh, this chart proves otherwise. Let me know if you guys disagree. Correct me if I'm wrong. I don't think I am, but I'm going to trust this chart. I'm going to share it with you guys. Nazi, Democrat. The only difference is besides socialism, no guns, censorship, media, mind control, pro-abortion, and worshiping the government, the only difference between Nazis and Democrats based on this chart is that Nazis hate Jews and Democrats actually hate Jews and whites. <laughs> Pretty accurate. Question for you. Sure, go ahead. And this is what I think, to the extent that there are folks who, by the way, may agree with the policies of Trump. Yes. But don't want to vote for Trump. And those, you know, you know some of those people. Mm. The reason that they don't want to vote for Trump is because they see, either in his character or the people who seem to support him, um, seem to be engaged in that or willing to engage in that. Right? Because you don't, what you don't see, you don't go to other rallies for Harris or see in, that, in a Harris rally that kind of vitriol. It just, you, you, you see, I, look, you there's. Don't? Oh, man, oh, man, oh, man. Yeah, this squawk box guy here on CNBC, uh, he's definitely for Kamala Harris. He's definitely for the Kamala Harris campaign. Or he's just really stupid and naive and dumb and just completely uninformed and unintelligent and unaware or blind. You know, he's got this scotoma where he can't see anything that Kamala Harris is doing besides what he wants to see that he wants to then try and manipulate and massage in a way that he can then present on this show that maybe he can get away with 
But if he ever has a guest on the show who's worth their salt, and, and God forbid he has somebody on like Byron Donalds, that shit ain't gonna fly. <laughs> Watch him get his ass ate up. Byron Donalds just destroyed Andrew Sorkin live on CNBC. Here, watch this. I don't think you do. Kamala Harris spends half her time talking about her rival as Hitler. After he's been, uh, there have been attempts on his life, not once, but twice. She's doing it right now. Every Democrat official at these rallies refers to him as Adolf Hitler. You got Hillary Clinton running around there hawking her book that nobody wants to buy, frankly. And they're talk- and she's talking about how this is akin to 1939. Are you out of your mind? You want to talk about rhetoric? Let's compare. But let me go back. We are talking about the comments of a comedian and everybody's going to forget it in 48 hours. The real joke in America is the terrible policy of Kamala Harris. Let's talk specifically about Puerto Ricans in America today. Puerto Ricans have had to live under the same inflation unleashed by Kamala Harris. And that's not a joke, but they got to live with it. Puerto Ricans today are living under the same terrible border policies that Joe Biden and Kamala Harris unleashed. That's a terrible joke on the American people. We should be focused on that. Yeah, basically where we're at right now is we are at the desperation phase of the Kamala Harris campaign and they are going to they're not they're not gonna uh go quietly they're gonna be kicking and screaming the entire way and um it's because they know that it's over they 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 failed from the start from Joe Biden to the debate the disastrous CNN debate to Kamala to COVID to Kamala to Megan Thee Stallion, to Usher, to Quavo, to Lizzo, to Eminem, to Leo, whoever, it doesn't matter. And um, they had billions of dollars to go through to spend on this uh, going out of business party, I guess, uh, retirement party, if you want to call it that. I think she's about to get fired, but they knew from the start that there was no way. There was no way that a woman, not because she's a woman, but because she has a track record, you know, she likes to throw her his, her track record around, you know, her accomplishments. But this woman, her track record proves that no one ever voted for her. Not then, not now, not ever. And unfortunately, this DEI hire that was attached to Joe Biden was only there to help him win in 2020. She was never supposed to actually do anything. She was never supposed to actually be anybody. She was never supposed to actually ever be president. And unfortunately, you know, if Donald Trump forced their hand and this was the only Hail Mary attempt that they had. But the Washington commanders, they are not. And this game is almost over and they're going to lose. And Donald Trump and J.D. Vance are going to win. Like if you agree, but let me know what you guys think. Drop comments down below. I can't wait to read them all. Share this video, help it go viral, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Take care.